the eye. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about blind spot, eye function, eye anatomy, eye versus brain, eye versus camera, accommodation and focusing, myopia, hyperopia, presbyopia, astigmatism, contact lenses, and laser eye surgery. So first I want you to do is pause the video and check out the blind spot activity. Blind spot. So what causes the blind spot? Well, there's no light sensitive areas where the optic nerve connects to the retina. So in other words, this will be the optic nerve here. This will be the eye. And on the back of the eye is the retina. The retina is the thing that takes in the information and sends it to the brain. So there's a spot where the two of them connect right there. If any image is focused on that yellow spot, it's not going to be detected by the retina because there's actually no light sensing cells in that particular area. And as a result, we're not going to be able to see it. The reason we normally don't notice our blind spot is because we have two eyes and the other eye will simply compensate for that one eye that has the blind spot currently. The eye. The eye is an optical instrument that we use to see around us. It acts very much like a camera by using a converging lens to focus the image on a sensor. It also has the ability to control the amount of light that comes in, just like a camera. Eye anatomy. So first up, the iris. The iris opens or closes to let more or less light in. The iris is located on the outside and it's going to be our colored area. The cornea and lens, they act to converge light rays and create an image. The cornea is located on the outside, you can see right there, and the lens is located on the inside. The retina is the screen where the image is located. It creates an electrical signal to be interpreted by the brain. The retina is located at the back of the eye right there, and the optic nerve transmits the electrical signal created by the retina to the brain so we can see. And the optic nerve is located right at the back of the eye as well. Eye versus brain. So we don't actually use our eyes to see. We use our eyes to take in information from the outside world and create an image on our retina. The eye uses a converging lens to create an image on the retina that's always smaller, inverted, and real, just like a camera. And you can see that right here. So you can see this is our object, and this is our image. You can see light from the object enters the eye, and then the eye focuses it on the back of the eye on the part called the retina. So you can see the result. The image that's created is smaller, inverted, and real. Images. The images are sent via electrical signals to the brain to be interpreted. Signals are transmitted through the optic nerve, which is this guy right at the back of the eye right there. The brain takes the inverted image and flips it so we see an upright image. Just like a camera sensor takes the inverted image and flips it around. Camera lens versus eye lens. Both cameras and eyes cannot move their screens. The retina in the eye is fixed and the back of the camera is fixed. Cameras move their lens to focus an image, but eyes can't move their lens either. Eyes instead change the shape of their lens using ciliary muscles which alter the focal length allowing focusing on the retina. These muscles are located right there and right there inside the eye. And when they contract and relax, the lens changes shape. It can be anything from relatively flat to thick in the middle to really thin and stretched out, depending how the light's coming into the eye. Accommodation. A healthy eye can focus light from both distant objects, this guy here, and nearby objects on the retina. To focus light from nearby objects, the lens must change its shape. It must thicken so that the light rays converge faster. So you can see from a nearby object, our light rays are coming at an angle. They're going in like that. They're kind of spreading out. So the lens needs to work harder to bring those rays back together right at the retina. Focusing. Some people can't focus light rays as well as they should, and this creates blurred images. This can happen when objects are far away or too near. Myopia or nearsightedness is when the eye can focus light rays from nearby objects but can't see objects clearly at a distance. It's caused by a too long eyeball or too much convergence of light by the lens and the cornea. Either way, the image is formed before the retina. Light rays are brought together in front of the retina like we just discussed. A diverging lens is needed to spread apart the light rays so they come together at the right time and create a clear image on the retina. So you can see our diverging lens right there spreads our rays apart a bit so that it takes longer for them to come together. When they do come back together, we get our proper image on our retina. Now, how thick or thin does that converging lens need to be? That depends on your prescription. If you need to have more divergence, then you get a higher prescription, which diverges the rays further, allowing more time for the image to be created on the retina. Hyperopia, otherwise known as farsightedness, is when people can see distant objects but can't see nearby objects. The eye cannot refract light well enough to create a focused image on the retina. Image is created behind the retina and is blurry, and it's usually caused by the eyeball being too short. So you can see our image back here is created after the retina. So the image that's actually being created on the retina is going to be blurry. Now to fix hyperopia, we're going to use a converging lens, and this is going to help the eye refract the light quicker. You can see in the top diagram, the light rays are refracted too slowly, and therefore the image is created after the retina. What we need to do is we need to help the eye a little bit. We're going to throw in a converging lens right there, and that's going to allow us to converge those light rays faster, bringing our image together right on the retina. 
Presbyopia is a form of farsightedness whereby people find it hard to read small print, and it usually comes with age as our eyes lose the ability to accommodate as we get older. Remember we talked about accommodation and how our eyes need to be able to change the shape of our lens from normal to thick to thin, and as you get older, our eyes lose the ability to do that, especially to go to this guy right there, to thicken. That takes a lot of muscles. And as you get older, those muscles weaken and you're not able to thicken that lens quite fast enough. A thicker lens is going to allow more convergence to occur. Since we can't converge light rays fast enough, we end up in a situation very similar to our hyperopia, where our image is located after the retina. So just like hyperopia, this is corrected using a converging lens. Now, people can have both farsightedness and nearsightedness, especially when they get older. If when they're younger, they're not able to see objects far away, they're going to require a diverging lens like we have here. But as they get older, they're also going to need something so that they can see up close because they may develop presbyopia. So what you're going to end up with is something called bifocals. Now, typically bifocal glasses are going to be shaped so that one part is a diverging lens up top and that the lower part is going to be a converging lens so you can see things close up. Astigmatism. Astigmatism is a common vision problem caused by an error in the shape of the cornea or lens. An irregularly shaped cornea or lens prevents light from focusing properly on the retina, resulting in vision being blurred or distorted at all distances. So you can see our image here is sideways, not giving a clear image on the retina. Now, astigmatism is corrected using a specifically designed lens that allows the rays to be focused on the retina. So you can see our lens right here is going to be very differently shaped. It's thicker at the top, it's thinner at the bottom, and it's kind of medium halfway through. So the characteristics of that lens is going to be based specifically on the eye that it's correcting. So in this case, you can see the eye kind of gets bigger at the bottom. So we have a bit of a smaller part here, and we have a thicker part up here. So astigmatism corrective lenses are going to be specifically designed for the eye that is corrected, and it can be different between the two lenses. Contact lenses serve the same function of glasses. They're shaped with either a thicker middle and thinner top and bottom, like we have here. This is called a converging lens. It's also called a positive meniscus, or a thinner middle and a larger top and bottom, like we have here, also known as a diverging lens or a negative meniscus. And the benefits of contact lenses is that they sit invisibly on top of the cornea, allowing freedom from glasses. However, contact lenses do have their drawbacks. They can be irritating. They can be difficult to put in. And it's the reason why many people stop using them. You can also get colored contact lenses to change the color of your eyes. Laser eye surgery. Laser eye surgery is a treatment to correct nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism. It's also a surgery very near and dear to my heart, as I had laser eye surgery a few years ago. People who require corrective lenses have eyes that are either too long, myopia, too short, hyperopia, or aren't shaped properly, astigmatism. Laser eye surgery reshapes the eye so it can properly focus light on the retina. So pause the video now and watch this video on laser eye surgery. So laser eye surgery is a very brief, painless procedure that utilizes short pulses of invisible ultraviolet light to reshape the cornea. By reshaping the curvature of the cornea, images can be better focused on the retina and the person will be better able to see without the need of corrective lenses. People with myopia need a diverging lens to separate the rays at the beginning so that it takes longer for them to reach the retina because the image is formed before the retina. The eye is too long. What laser eye surgery does is that it goes in and flattens this cornea a little bit. What does that do? Well, it makes it so that the rays aren't converged as quickly right at the beginning as convergence happens both at the lens, this guy right there, and the cornea. So if we flatten the cornea, then our rays aren't going to converge at the beginning nearly as much. That'll create rays that are more parallel to each other when they hit the lens, which will then focus the light properly on the retina, allowing you to see without the need of corrective lenses. Someone who suffers from hyperopia will get the exact opposite treatment. Someone who suffers from hyperopia will get the exact opposite treatment. Since the image is formed past the retina, we need convergence to occur faster. So laser eye surgeons will go in and create a larger bulge at the top of the cornea. So when light strikes it, the light rays are already converging faster, like something like that. So when they hit the lens, they can focus themselves properly on the retina, simply allowing the eye to do the job it was supposed to do in the first place. Now, as I said, I have personal experience with laser eye surgery. It is a very painless procedure. You're in and out in 15 minutes after the consultation, but the actual surgery itself is really only about 15, 20 minutes. It is painless. And when you walk away, you'll be able to see much better than you did when you walked into the room. And in about two or three hours, your vision will be significantly better. I know in my case, I could see almost perfectly about eight hours after my surgery. So if you're someone who uses corrective lenses, seriously consider laser eye surgery. It's one of the best things I've ever done for myself. Now, before you finish the lesson, have a look at video number four, as it gives you a little bit more information about laser eye surgery.